Hello everyone and welcome to Jumper Man Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY. And today we have a service call for a Hashizaki ice machine. Thank you to everyone tuning into Jumper Man Tech. Today we are working on a Hashizaki ice machine. This is a dual condensing unit so it's one and two condensing units. And here's our bin. The system is making ice, but the issue is that this unit is producing ice prematurely, and that is because we're losing water. I did the preventive maintenance on this unit not so long ago, and what I found was that this was leaking water. As you can see, if I drop this down, there's water, and it's because there's a tear in here. So we all decided that we're gonna be replacing the float switch and the rubber housing. So right now, I got the system on off, and what we have to do is dump the water that's left in the water tank so that we can pull this without getting <laughs> splashed with all the water so we can just replace this it's going to be an easy fix here's a new float switch super easy to install it's just two screws and a quick connector can't go wrong and right here we have the rubber boot it's going to be a quick and easy so like i mentioned before the power is off do you hear that sound sounds crazy if you turn off the water you lose that sound so whatever it is is something with the water circuit but this unit does work it didn't call me for that so let's just go ahead and change the switch why is there tape here is there a leak there and that was their way to fix it <laughs> I hope not as you can see some of these ice cubes are extremely premature let's see if I can find something on the other side where the ice is better this is a bit better still it's not making good ice on this side compared to this one that's because we're losing water so we can't have a full sized ice cube we get something where like a little pan or something where i can dump this water so i'm just going to pull out this rubber hose and i'll be able to drain the tank got a little hose right there got a little pan so let's go ahead and drain it Everything is now drained, so we are safe to work. Just gonna put this back for now. So this is a cable that runs through, goes up and around, and it comes here, and it looks like it says K5. So it's gonna be our K5 connector. So let's go ahead and start pulling out this wire so we can run the new one. Simply unplug it, and let's pull this thing out. So the wires are taken care of i took off the tape and that's because they're actually using that to hold this thing up it's ridiculous this thing is loose but i didn't mark it so i can put in the new float in the same exact place so yeah it's important so it's literally a little vent here so i'm just gonna pull that out that's done and then this one goes there so i think that's a check valve get this off somehow man that thing is stuck on there all right that's that if i take off that one screw this whole thing will come loose all right all right got the boot off so as you can see, there's a tear right there. The guy didn't believe that it was leaking, but that's because the water already leaked out when he came to look at it. And as it starts creating ice, you know, we're losing water. So it got below that level and whatever. Anyways, this thing is actually filthy and it's kind of dirty in there too. So let's see, maybe I'll clean that out real quick. 
and start putting in a new one. So here's the new float. It's gonna match up exactly where I drew the lines and put in this screw. I'll have to go get another screw later, but for now, let's go ahead and get this started. So right there. Oh, it looks like the threads for this as well is gone. That's why they put that tape to hold this thing up. Once this fills up with water, this thing is gonna fall and you're gonna damage the whole uh, level for this system and you're not gonna make ice properly. But let's see, if I attach this hose right here, it should actually hold it up, up a little bit. Yeah. Not much, but, oh no, it is holding. And I guess this will hold it as well. Let's plug this in. We need to get some good screws here. So that's that. You gotta slide the rubber boot on, super simple. And run the new wire up. Now it's cool. And let's just go ahead and run this wire exactly the way it was ran before. And just plug it in. Super simple, quick fix. So, Let's go ahead and run this thing up. Why is this like this? I don't think this cover is really going to close properly though. This mat you might get away with, but you would think there's a special place to run this. Man, this whole unit's falling apart. I think it melted. And yeah, man, let's just run this and make sure they, they got some ice. gonna run this in between the clips and that's it all right so I got it in there and we're just gonna plug this in same way we found the other one and we're done and there is our brand new float switch I just got to find two screws where I can safely secure this Everything is now assembled and everything is now wired. So once I get those screws mounted, I can start the system and just check the operation and see what kind of ice it makes. But that's pretty much it. That's how you change the float switch and the rubber boot for it. If anyone found this video interesting or helpful, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe. I'll catch you all next time.